It's been so long. I won't blame you if you've forgotten. Or maybe you just weren't there to understand. Because let's be honest, it must not look like much. Stumbling into this sport, hearing tales of this invincible Russian bear, this indomitable heavyweight assassin, this dead-eyed killer who was once the most fearsome force on the planet. And then see this. An unremarkable man who casts an unremarkable shadow to the unacquainted eye. Never the loudest, never the boldest, never the biggest nor the strongest, hell, never one to look fitter than your everyday bartender. How? How could this be the guy? No, to the uninitiated, it must not make sense. But make no mistake, when Fedor Emelianenko makes that final walk on February 4th, the ghosts of MMA will make it with him. He is the last remnant of a golden era, the last glimmer of a dying light, the greatest heavyweight the first two decades of this sport had ever seen. Why does Fedor's retirement matter? Because history matters. Moments matter. The last emperor mattered. The truth? It's a minor miracle Fedor became who he did. Barely six foot tall, barely 230 pounds, raised in a small Soviet town, the Sambo master should have been an afterthought. David miscast among Goliaths, an everyman in an era of muscle men and PED monsters. But the world learned quick. While the UFC struggled stateside throughout the 2000s, MMA abroad thrived and pride fighting championships was king. Fedor's pride debut? A 6 foot 11, 260 pound colossus named Sammy Schilt. Fedor tore through him. So eye-opening was the smaller man's prowess so undeniable in less than a year he challenged for the pride heavyweight throne. He met Antonio Rodrigo Nogueira, Ignog, a black belt considered the most dangerous grappler of the time. Nullified. Dominated by brutal rushing ground and pound. It was all too easy. Three fights to arise from anonymity. The giant slayer of all giant slayers, he was heavyweight's first extinction level event, the asteroid that killed off the dinosaurs, and none truly saw it coming. There was no looking back. His run, 28 fights without a loss, nearly a full decade undefeated. In a weight class dominated by volatility, it was unheard of and remains so to this day. Even more so when you consider the names. Hall of Famers, UFC champions, and then they pioneers and legitimate legends, one by one they all fell in his wake. Who really stood a chance? Counters the speed of bullets, swooping hooks and pure wild strength and ability to combine terrifying savagery with cold efficiency, purposefulness, tempered by natural instinct, a mind homed by a lifetime of defying the odds. But most of all, that calm, that eerie, uncanny calm, that innate sense to navigate every storm anytime the seas look bleak. His highlights still boggle the mind. Two of the most surreal comebacks of the era, the night Kazuyuki Fujita nearly tore off his head. Oh my god! Fedor is in huge trouble here! The overhand punch by Fujita! The night Kevin Randleman nearly turned the sport upside down, both men, both times, tapping out mere seconds later. It was inhuman. Even the Slam King himself, Rampage Jackson, couldn't believe his eyes from the commentary booth. Can Turns take it around. Oh, oh my gosh! Oh, Slater hits head. head! Knees! He should be oh, to the head! Oh my oh, god! That's Rampage style! Man, I never did anything like that. They understood what they were watching. A folktale being written in real time. There was Mark Hunt, Mark Coleman, 50,000 packed into Saitama Super Arena for Fedor or Mirko Krokop, the most anticipated night MMA had seen to that point. Again, always, he shined. None in this life are unbeatable, no man cannot be conquered, but the way Fedor tore through his peers, he looked closer than anyone ever before. Even the downfall of pride could not halt his ascent. His first two fights stateside in the post-pride era, they came against the two men who had dominated the UFC during his reign. Tim Sylvia and Andrei Vlosky. One lasted 36 seconds, the other three minutes. By the end of the 2000s, there was no doubt who had stood atop the mountain as the undisputed king. Fighter of the year? Try fighter of the decade, the singular focus of an entire sport, even the one nut too tough for Dana White to ever crack. No, for a time, Fedor was everything. For a time, Fedor was MMA. Sure, that aura of invincibility it's gone now. 
but his final tally as he rides into the sunset still stands up to any who have ever laced up the gloves. 12 champions of major combat promotions on his hit list, 10 of the most dominant years ever seen in the heavyweight division, the godfather to a generation of Russian talent, and the Washington of the Mount Rushmore from one of the most important, beloved, formative, and fiercely competitive eras MMA has ever seen. No, there is no historical comparison for what Fedor accomplished, so it is fitting as we enter this 48th and final fight 21 years after this all began that Fedor goes out the only way he could, vying for 12 pounds of gold, vying for a major title of a major organization on a major broadcast network. How else could a story like this even end? So when you hear the tributes this week, when you see the celebrations, the revelry, the hyperbole and salutes and bouquets, know they are there for a reason. The last ride of The Last Emperor means more than your average Saturday night, because there will never be another Fedor Emelianenko. MMA should consider itself lucky to have the one that it did.